So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about distributions. I made a, a chi-squared distribution, which is a lot of times used for uh, like multivariate tests, things like ANOVA or, or joint distributions and things like that. Um, it's related to the F-test, because the F-test is a ratio of these. The, the chi-squared is actually a sum of squared normal distributions. And how many you add up is, is the degrees of freedom. So a one-squared one squared normal would be chi squared of one degree of freedom, but 100 would be 100 degrees of freedom. Right? And the larger you get that approaches a normal distribution, that's one thing I'm going to show. So this is going to combine a little bit about distributions as well as some R data visualization as well, and also a loop. So I'm kind of doing multiple things at once here, trying to show some concepts all applied together. But it starts out with distributions, then it gets into some data visualization and loops. All right, so. Um, First here, I'm going to uh, just plot one, all right, a, a chi-squared with one degree of freedom, and I'm going to generate a million random numbers that fit this distribution, and then I'm going to plot the density, and that's one way you can do it. You can get a line graph. Um, and so here, it doesn't take all that long to do it. Um, see, I've already made a million elements over here. And then you can, if you just take the density, actually, first of all, it'll show you this. It'll show you all the, you know, kind of like the summary of it. Um, you know, with the minimum, maximum, and then the quantiles, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot that as a line graph. I'm going to make the, the limit go from 0 to 10, just so it doesn't tail off to the right too far. And then this is going to be my title of my graph. All right, so I'm going to plot this. This is kind of nested in there with the title and, and then an uh, x-axis limit, right? And this is kind of what it looks like. Notice that it's very, very skewed toward the left, and it runs off this direction. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all these concepts next to show um, a little bit about what happens if you increase the degrees of freedom, all right? And so uh, I'm going to have a number of standard ones here, one degree, two degree, and then I'm going to skip some 10, 25, all the way up to 1,000. And, and one thing with R, if you want to make um, multiple plots on a graph, 10 is kind of the limit. So I'm sticking to a list of 10 that kind of covers this. I'm also going to uh, change lines and color as I graph. I picked a nice shade of green. Um, and then I'm also going to kind of make histograms. All right, and but I'm going to plot them looking like a continuous distribution, like a solid color distribution. Uh, one thing here is I'm also using a loop, which a lot of people don't don't think you should use an R, but um, the, uh, with the loop, I'm going to actually make the 10 graphs. I'm going to make a table with some statistics, right? So I'm going to show you how to do a loop as we go. Right? So here, here we go. So set seed allows you to generate some random numbers and, and get the same answer every time. So I'm going to set the seed here. This is my list. This is the degrees of freedom that I'm choosing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 25, 100, 500, and 1,000. All right? And then we're going to draw from the list here in our loop. So it's going to repeat this for every item. So it's going to do it once for one degree of freedom, next for two degrees of freedom freedom, etc. Now, PAR, this is the rows and columns here. Notice how it's done. That if This is going to be, MF row gives you how many rows, how many columns, and this is a graphing command. So this is make something that's this dimension, 5 by 2. Right? And then the other thing is if you have so many graphs, graphs together, they kind of squish together and look real ugly. So this is going to give us some columns here. And so if you think of like top, bottom, left, and right, um, I'm not can't remember offhand what the order is exactly, but you could have two, 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 giving two units on each side. This is just saying repeat two, four times. But the reason why it's four is that um, it's kind of a list of two, 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 two. So that's what this says, repeat two, four times. But what are those four things? It's the top, the bottom, left, and right. All right so this, this is just simply to make a nice looking arrangement of graphs. Okay. Now watch this line. This I'm gonna, When you do a loop, one thing you're going to do is every item is going to be appended to the one below it. But the first one needs to append it to something. So I'm going to make something that's nothing, a null set called stats table. So the first item will be added to this nothing. The tenth item will be added to the ninth table. Right? If you don't put this, this won't run because you don't have anything to tie the first one to. Okay? So this is just creating a blank table to start with. Now this is the loop for i, for all i in L1, which is this. So it's going to be repeat ten times. This bracket says open bracket and close bracket. What goes inside? This is the command that gets looped and repeated those times. Right? This could be i in 1 to 100. All right? um, sometimes if you did, did have a list, you could have 1 colon 10 or something like that. But this is in the items of the list. Right? So chi 1, all right, which is going to get repeated 10 times and kind of replaced, this is this what I had above, which is random in the chi-squared distribution, one million observations, and then the next thing is is according to the degrees of freedom here. So a million observations in, in a distribution with one degree of freedom, a million with two, a million with three, and so forth. 
the next item is draw a histogram. Draw a histogram here, and I said with a thousand bins to make it really smooth. Again, histograms are always like these columns, right? But how many columns you can choose in R, and having a bunch of little tiny columns makes it continuous. Probability is true means instead of the numbers of the distribution on the vertical axis, you would actually have the probability, right? So 0.4 or something like this. This is the title. Main is the title. And this is an interesting command that's good to know. You can paste these words, D in quotes, DF equals and then I. And so it's going to paste df equals and put whatever numbers here, right? This is the separator, which says there's no separator in there. It's not a comma. It's not a tab. It's actually no space. It's simply nothing as the separator. So when you paste things, you have to know kind of how to separate the things you're pasting. So this is to say df equals 1, df equals 2, all the way to df equals 1,000. In my, my uh, chat squad, I'm just taking the base green, and then I'm going to have uh, LTY0 is actually no line at all. So the, these vertical bars that you see in a histogram are actually going to have uh, no line to them, and it's going to look like a continuous filled green thing that looks kind of like the normal curve that we've seen before. Right? This is going to be for the plotting part. Now, stats table is going to be row binded, so it's going to take the first stats table, which is, you know, if, if it's the third time through, it's going to be one and two, and then below it on the next row is going to be this. Right? This is going to be a co combined set of the mean, standard deviation, variance and the ratio of the variance to the mean, which is going to be calculated as we go. One thing to note up here is the mean of a, of a, of a chi-squared is n, and the variance is 2n, and so 2n divided by n is going to be 2, and we're going to see it's pretty close to that. Right? So it's going to make this row every time, it's going to append it to the one below it. Right? Now, it's going to plot. It's going to plot over here. But now we say, well, we have our stats table. We're going to make it into a data frame just because, and we're going to give it these column names, mean, SD, var and var over mean, and then the row names are going to be the degrees of freedom here. Then we're going to print it with uh, rounding it to three decimal places. Okay? And then so finally I usually undo what I did here. Some people notice that if you make this command, maybe next time you want to plot a single graph, it's going to remember that you want ten graphs, it's just going to print it up here. You want it to fill the whole space, so I always undo what I did at the bottom. Right? So that's what we do. This is the list of degrees of freedom we're going to do, and we're going to loop through, make a nice graph, start an empty table, and then ten times in a loop we're going to make the distribution of, of random numbers, a million at a time, draw it as a histogram that fits these commands with the title, and then we're going to make the table at the end. So if we run it, right, here's how we do it. Click Run. It's looping through over and over. You can see it plot over here. And that's kind of the point for today, is that as you increase the degrees of freedom, you see that the hump kind of moves toward the center, the skewness disappears, you get to a large degree of freedom, it approaches the normal distribution, right? So it's pretty small over here and hard to, hard to see. We can sort of zoom in, but as it's going, you can see that eventually it looks like a normal distribution. Okay? And, and so that's the idea. And, and look at the mean. It's the degrees of freedom. It's the same every time. Standard deviation is uh, the square root of the variance, which is two times that. Right? So that's what it is. So it's a couple of things at once. One, we're looking at the, the chi-squared distribution. We're looking at how the degrees of freedom change the shape and change the distribution. So we're using it for distributions. Or, and we're looking at means and the variance and the moments of those. At the same time, we're doing some loops to kind of create 10 different variations that can prove that point. And so with the looping, we did 10 graphs, and then we made a table with 10 rows. Each time we looped it through, it added a row to the bottom. Okay? And then finally, we did a little bit of data visualization. We took a histogram, which I prefer to the line graph. We made it so that you can't see the bars. Um, we changed the color, made a title, can change the, the uh, labels, you can change the uh, the range on the x and y axes, and, and same thing for the tables we did. So all those concepts we did at once in this example.